Sunday edition, special, special Sunday edition because the great one to my right, my partner in crime right here, uh, I'll let you uh, explain what happened. So, um, I don't know if y'all remember from last episode, but I think I briefly mentioned that I had got roped into participating into my company's softball uh, corporate challenge thing. So anyway, there was practice yesterday, and to make a long story short, you know, before I get into it, because I was thinking about this earlier, I just want to speak on irony um, for a brief second before I bring it full circle. When I was in, let's say, uh, let's say seventh grade, it was in seventh grade where I began referring to myself as Big Daddy Cool. And then, let's see, let's say early, mid-2000s. Um, Seventh grade, that was at the uh, that was at Whitney Young. Yeah, that is correct, at Whitney Young. Big yeah. Daddy Cool, well, I was going to say Big Daddy Cool was born, but I stole the name, but, yeah. you know. I mean, it, the marks know. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. 2.0 was born. So, anyway, Kevin Nash, you know, love him or hate him, he begins to get a rep for tearing his quads <laughs> <clears throat> on a regular basis. You know what I'm saying? He he tears his quads like some people drink beer. You know what I'm saying? So, and unfortunately, um, I fi- found that amusing. So, anyway, yesterday, I'm at softball practice. And, you know, we're doing um, outfield drills. And I'm just running to catch a little... Just a little routine ball rolling my way, and I feel fire shoot up both of my thighs. <clears throat> so I ask one of my dudes, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, uh, what's these muscles right here uh, in the front of your legs? Now, I thought they were the quads, but you know what I'm saying? At that time, I'm, I'm in a lot of pain. Um, I had just bellowed out a shout like I had gotten shot. And uh, so I wanted to make sure I got as accurate as information as possible so I could make the pain go away. So anyway, um, after that happened, I basically I was incapacitated. I could barely walk. Mm. Um, I, can, I can walk today a little bit better, but I'm walking gingers, gingerly. Um, anything faster than a walk is not happening, but... That's why we're doing the podcast today. <clears throat> yeah, I was uh, sitting here. My wife and I, we was sitting there chilling and uh, talking about your quads. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's funny about that, but go, go on. You're not 18 years old anymore. <laughs> Well, th- thanks for the reminder. <coughs> I'm not going to disclose how old you are, um, but I just want you to know that you're at an age where you should take it that second gear. You know, you should bring it down a notch. Like on the Autobahn of life, <laughs> you should be on the shoulder. <laughs> oh, I am <laughs> on the shoulder. I mean, I'm I'm not that old. No, uh, no, you're not. <laughs> However, thank you. I mean, you called me no spring chicken yesterday, and, and I this told is you. correct. And I, it's absolutely correct. And you have a lot more gray than I do. Oh, I, I do. And they come from wisdom and beating up pussy. <laughs> 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 ah, However, uh. I told you, I also do old man things, like 
sit down <laughs> <laughs> and not do shit That's and a- say words like pocketbook <laughs> and rut. <laughs> How'd you like that rut beer? Oh man, that <laughs> that rut rut beer was. I liked it. It was very tasty to me. I thought it was absolutely uh, the drizzling shits. <laughs> um, I made some ice cream though, so I'm gonna mix it with that. I know uh, wifey gonna be like, oh, I like some alcoholic root beer float or whatever. We'll just keep it moving. Um, I like it. Shout out to Coney Island Brewing Company. You know, Hollywood likes it. <laughs> I, it, it, it's bad taste. You know, it didn't taste like pussy to me, so <laughs> I said, fuck it. Here. I'm trying to give you the shit, so you uh, trying to give you the medicine. Oh shoot, my bad player. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, I, it's about the time, the chance where uh, the time where we plug the the social media. I I, I made the social media accounts. All right, uh, the, the the email is official dot street smarks together. Okay, scratch that. Take two. Official dot street smarks. At gmail.com. Uh, the Twitter, official sw- street smarks. IG, official street smarks. Like and follow. Uh, what else we got? I forgot what else we got. YouTube. Oh, the YouTube, obviously. Street Smart Audio, where you hear this eventually. Yeah. Every 605, you know what I'm talking about. the Extreme Retro Review, VCW. Uh, I'm going to get it down. To where it's, it comes out smooth, but, you know, mm-hmm. It's whatever. a work in progress, you right. know what I'm saying? And we are uh, supporters of indie wrestling. We are patrons of independent wrestling. Um, so if you are a independent wrestler, independent promoter, and you want to uh, promote your show, send us your uh, program to the email, and we will put it up on the review. And give us some lead time so you can draw a house. Uh, I want to get the word out because the guys you see on top right now, 10, 15 years ago, were the guys making 50 bucks a night, you True know, uh, ROH, you know, IWA. So, True I mean, that. and all these guys, I mean, they have to make a living. So more eyes on the product you know, could potentially mean more butts and seats. So I'm trying to do my part. Which translates... To more money for y'all. Right. So, and we doing this out of the guidance of our hearts because, you know, we want to see the business thrive. And I'm not really feeling what the WWE is doing right now. It's, oh, man. I, I don't want to blow my wad um, prematurely. But, uh, yeah, w- w- watching, um, watching these ECW shows has kind of uh, made me Realize, I mean, I always kind of feel like the quotation, in quotation, uh, product has been lacking. But, like, it's just, um, again, not to get ahead of uh, the show, mm-hmm. but I find myself, like, in the little hour shows, like, just uh, on their out WWE and uh, WWE in 1993 with people I never heard of and um, you know shitty wrestling it's crazy how week to week nobodies are becoming somebodies slow burn it's It's I mean when you watch it outside the bubble and you just take it in take it in like that it's just it's, it's, it's amazing to me you're looking at Seth Rollins, you're looking at Samoa Joe, and you're asking yourself, why do I care enough to part with my money? And these guys, and you see it in the shows at the Cabrini Fieldhouse, and you see it at the ECW Arena, that the, the, the attendance is growing. It's growing. And it's growing. And it's actually growing and mutating. It's, uh, and that's something else you're going to have to watch, too, as you, as you go on. Um... Next thing. Oh, I did want to talk about the. Uh, Excuse me. I did want to talk about the uh, the WWE top guy situation again. 
and bring it back to the Hardys. That's what I was talking about. Well, which, which brand, SmackDown or Raw? It doesn't really matter. It's more more so about the Hardys and the WWE as a whole. Okay. Um, for those who don't know, the Hardys were down in TNA, and they made this gimmick called the uh, Broken Gimmick. Delete, 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 delete. Oh and it didn't make TNA any money. So when uh, the Hardys contract ran out, Vince snagged them up and put the belts on them immediately. But they came back as regular Hardys. You know, Team Extreme. Right, right. You know, attitude there, Hardys. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, even though they have basically recreated themselves. And what comes to find out is that uh, TNA is claiming ownership of the intellectual property of the gimmick. Mm hmm. So they can't do it on WWE TV. Now, the fans can do it all day. And Matt has hinted at it a little bit here and there. But obviously, it's being worked out behind the scenes, you know, by Vince and Jeremy McDivitt and all those guys. Mm -hmm. Because if they weren't allowed to do it, Vince would just say, you guys are 1999 Hardys, okay? Um, So obviously, it's coming. I believe... Um, with the expansion of the WWE Network and the more original content, there's going to be a broken universe. Whoa. That's where I think this is going. Because, and the, the Hardys, they, do they still have the belts? Yeah, they're defending them tonight in okay. Extreme Rules. And I feel as though, oh, nice. Um, we got to run down that car real quick then. Um, yeah, look that up, that up yeah, yeah, look that up. Um, that's a Raw? Yeah. Raw show? Okay. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I believe as soon as WWE and whoever owns the gimmick, whoever believes they own the gimmick, hash it out, Hardy should lose the belts, and then they start this broken universe gimmick because there's too much of a realistic aspect to wrestling right now with all the ROH guys on top. The House of Horrors match doesn't work. That's why I was shit on. You can't, sh- you can't have a this House of Horrors match in 2017, and then next thing you know, you got Samoa Joe and AJ Styles and Kevin Owens and all these guys who came up on the indie scene having real matches, having real wrestling matches. Mm-hmm. Don't mesh. So I feel on the network, it allows the WWE the the opportunity to fill dead airtime with a broken universe TV show where the Hardys are creative consultants and they're in the fold because they're proven to make money. Mm-hmm. Eventually, the Hardys and TNA, it would have made money. It was gonna, I mean, it was gonna gain traction and they would have made they would have made some money. It wouldn't have been money that that would have rivaled Vince, but it would have been money to the extent of that's outside money. We want that money, so we pay the Hardys. Mm-hmm. We put the titles on the Hardys. We give them a shitload of merchandise uh-huh. to co- to compensate. I'm sure they get a super huge cut of of, of merch that they sell. Because they can't pay him. Like, the money that they they, they have to pay the Hardys? Think about this. Like, it, they have created a universe. Potentially, that's going to be showcased on a WWE network. Where all the goofy gimmicks. <laughs> and they'll come through, right? And they'll have this universe where it's basically Lucha Underground... But produced in a WWE style. Oh man, I thought you was talking about where it would be a uh, Senior Benjamin and King Maxwell and. Oh no, it's gonna the... be like that. Oh, okay. It's gonna be that, but because... it's gonna be its own show on the WWE Network. Because think about it, nobody's watching Two Hundred Five Live, and nobody's watching NXT. That's such a microcosm of the fan base is watching those shows. Very. They're no. dead shows. Main event. 
And then put it like this. You got the Hardys with this built-in fan base. They make the TV show that's set in this universe where anything goes. And the fan base just comes over. Whoop. I would have to see... I don't have to see how that played out first because, you know what I'm saying, it it depends on how much input. Um, they don't have tons of input because they're not wrestling at that point. They're the agents. The Hardys are in. When Vince, I'm telling you, when Vince signed those guys this last time, mm-hmm. they're in. Okay. They are in creative. This oh, this shit. This title run... They're not making them. <laughs> They're made. They're the Hardys. You, got They're, right. you, you have gotten these guys to poke their mind and to, to go forth and see mm-hmm. where, where you could take wrestling. Okay? Yeah, uh, this, they're not working. Matt's like 42. Yeah. Jeff's getting there and over four they're over forty. They're not working. Yeah, they're definitely not working. Come yeah. on. <laughs> so what is so what is it for? It's for the gimmick. We need more original content. That would be cool. Raw ratings are dwindling. I'm telling you, it's gonna come to a point 2018, 2019 is when the new contract comes up. Vince is not gonna get the money he got last time. So you use all this time to promote the network because guess what? You're going to pay for Raw and pay for SmackDown. You're going to. You might have a clip show here and there on USA, but all WWE original content will be on the WWE network by 2019. Fact, Fooge, said it. <laughs> you know what? I actually wouldn't mind it as a um, as a uh, soon to be cord cutter. He's taking the. He's taking the. He's tanking the, the TV on purpose. You know, what I'm saying I, I like to be able to watch it live and stuff. Uh, you know, what I'm saying, but sometimes, like you know, I'll be having stuff to do. Like, you when know. it don't even matter if you watch Raw or SmackDown or not at that point. But guess what? Because guess what? You already paid for it. Yeah. You've already committed your ten dollars for it, and I can watch it when I want to. And guess what? When Raw and SmackDown come come to the sh- come to the network, mm-hmm. network price goes up to twelve ninety nine. Because and because it's all because it's business. Because then I can ditch Hulu. That's the only reason. Because it's I business. It's business at this point. And now I got your ass paying for this shit. Vince wanted weekly pay per views in the nineties. He tried it out with Tuesday in Texas. It bombed. Shoot, I see why. That's when, uh, oh, wait a minute. Is that when Hulk Hogan lost to the Undertaker? Mm, that's when Hulk got it back. Okay. He lost at SummerSlam. No, he lost that Survivor Series. Come on, man. That's Fools what, just killing what, you right here. That's what Come I, on, WWF guy. That's what I meant to say. I was thinking Survivor Come on. Series. But SummerSlam came out. But you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I, I, I remember Tuesday in Texas. Um, not being on that. I don't remember anything outside of Hogan. Oh, I I remember the uh, Jake Macho feud. Oh, the snake bit Macho mm, man. I do remember that. Oh uh, yeah, that was yeah, that was a but scary thing to see as a kid. The, the snake was hilarious. Oh, that shit freaked me out. <laughs> Hi-ya! <laughs> I still remember when uh, WrestleCrap dot com. Shout out uh, R D Reynolds and all of them. Justin Henry, if he's still there. Um, WrestleCrap.com. Uh, they used to do the clips, man. Did you ever go to WrestleCrap.com? Um, I don't. I don't think so. You are not in this to win this. I'll tell you that. I'm gonna learn you. I'm gonna learn you. Cause you never read Def of WCW, have you? Read it. I can't say that I. I can't say that I have. <sighs> that, yeah. you know Look, man. Look, you a black smart fan. Come on, somebody. And you haven't even read the you haven't even read the literature? You haven't even got the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the business? Uh, I guess when it comes to that particular book, uh, no I don't. I got the book upstairs. I'm gonna put you on. But uh-huh. look, this time, you're gonna return the book like you ain't returned my mom's book. 
Oh, remember, shoot, what, what book was that? Remember when Miles gave you a book back in the day? I recall. I, rec- I remember. Shout out Sheila. I don't remember what book it was, though. Right. And she always uh, shit on you about that book. Every uh-huh. time she saw you, she'd be like, ah, where's my book? Tom. I got to ask her what that is so I could uh, re ever get her another one. I know Amazon.com is a thing now. Yeah. I'm just saying. It's where I published my book. One and only book. That's right. Acclaimed author, Hollywood. Stretch your paycheck to the to the max. You know what I'm saying? By A.S. Broughton on Amazon.com. Mm-hmm. You know there you go. About? Yeah, I like it. I like it. I'm going I'm to uh, eventually put my uh, my book up there. Chronicles of the Z-Men. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, heck yeah. I'd pay for that. All 1,000 <laughs> pages. I am a Z-Man fan. You know Not Tom Zink. Shout out Tom Zink, though. <laughs> Yo, I want to show you the Tom Zink rants. Uh, remind me one day in the future. Because you got to read them. Okay. Like, you, like as you, gonna, as you get smarter, you're going to be like, Yo, <laughs> this was a thing? <laughs> okay, okay. All right, anyway. Uh, all right, next. Courtesy of KSideSeats.com. This date in pro wrestling history, June 4th. Yeah, June 4th. My fault. My fault. I'm trying to load it up. Let me see if I can see some uh, some good. We're going to uh, skip the news. 34 years today in uh, Pennsylvania. Andre the Giant beat Big John Studd. Oh. 31 years ago today. Kerry Atkinson, ECW alumni. Better known to wrestling as fans as Kerry Von Erich is injured in his motorcycle accident. Oh, wow. What? Now, there's another ironic thing for that ass. Here we go. He crashes into the back of a police car as he attempted to pass a truck on a two-lane highway. At the time, Kerry was wearing shorts and no shoes, hardly protective clothing for a high-speed crash. Kerry would suffer a dislocated hip and severely damaged right foot that would eventually have to be amputated. When exactly the foot was amputated remains remains for debate. Some say it was amputated during the surgery following the crash, some believe it was amputated when he re-injured it while attempting to return to the ring before he was ready. Von Erich's family claimed he had his ankle fused, limiting the mobility in his right foot, and it was only after his death they admitted he wrestled with a prosthetic. Wow. There you go. Uh, 15 years ago today, uh, SmackDown taping in OKC, Billy and Chuck beat Rico and Rikishi. <laughs> In a tag team elimination match to win the tag team championship. <laughs> Why Moving is on. That on there? <laughs> yeah. Eight years ago, <laughs> WWE re-signed Chris Masters. Man, yeah. this is not a great day for wrestling. Oh man! Oh, <laughs> Six right. years ago, Mick Foley requests and is granted his release from TNA. I met Mick Foley. Did you in know? Orlando? Oh shoot! How was it? It's cool. We went indoor skydiving together. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Uh, were, were you or him scared? Or scared? I wasn't scared. He wasn't scared. I mean, he didn't want to talk after I took the picture. I got the picture was on Facebook. You liked it a long time ago. Hey, man, you know what I'm saying? My, you know, it's it's anyway. hard to recall from the from the long term sometimes in certain situations. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Moving on. Four years ago. TNA release, releases Ty Kennelly, oh, the announcer. Four oh, years ago, damn, Spike God. TV announces a press release about Quentin Rampage Jackson signing with TNA. He had joined the main event, main event Mafia. Well, that was a big deal, huh? Yeah, it was not. Was that uh, Kevin Nash, Scott Steiner, mm-hmm. Kurt Angle, yep. Booker T? Yep. That's it. Sting. Oh, Sting. Oh, yeah. Samoa Joe was an uh, associate. Uh, Taz was an associate. I can't remember anybody else, honestly. Maybe some security guards because any fucking group that Kevin Nash is in always has bodyguards. Or he's the bodyguard. <laughs> With Seriously, Shawn Michaels, or when he was, uh, yeah, 
Was was he a bodyguard as Oz? Yeah, he was a he's more like a bodyguard enforcer for uh, as Vinny Vegas. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But uh tag team partner for uh D D P P. Yeah, Vinny Vegas. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he acted as a bodyguard for Hogan in the original NWO. <laughs> oh, man. Dang. I mean, like, NWO 2000, he had Ron and Don Harris as as, as, as the goofs. I mean, so. The Harris twins. Right. They're, they're bums. <laughs> Poor guys. I mean, they beat up Shawn Michaels, so I give him respect Poor. to that. <laughs> That's a scummy story real quick. Anyway, uh, today would have been the oh, 79th shit. birthday of Robert James Gino Morella. Okay. You know who that is? No. You don't know who Gino is? Mm-mm. Oh, wait a minute. The referee. No, that's the son. Oh, Joey Morella's the son. Oh, of yeah. who's the father? Well, he just said Gino Morella, but I don't know who he is. Bro, my son. Oh, shoot. Get out of here. Yeah. Shut the front door. Yes. Gino Morella. <laughs> That's why Jesse Ventura will always shit on Morella. <laughs> oh, 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 snap. Okay. He would always shit on, on, the, on the referee when they would do commentary. You know what I'm saying? Because that was, that was his son. Oh, that's awesome. It was like, a, it was like an ongoing rim. Oh, man. Oh, shoot. Damn. Damn. Fans, uh... Wood is it? He's he's like he's like a first grader. <laughs> hey man, you know what I'm saying? Like you know, but there is a lot of there is a lot of useless information in this brain of mine. So it's you know what I'm saying. Forgive me if I don't know who uh, referees' parents are. Or the- <laughs> all right, all right. I mean, all right. So basically, that was a backhanded, uh, a backhanded roast on me, saying that I'm a nerd. But, I mean, it's cool. <laughs> My bitch is bad though. <laughs> I got one for you though. Anyway, uh, anything. Woo. And that's why he was all. Sh- they, they. Uh, Bobby Heenan said in the shoot interview that uh, after his son had died, because his son died in a uh, car accident. Oh shit. Um. Like, he just, like, gave up, and then, you know, he died, you know, soon thereafter. Well, not soon thereafter, in, like, six, seven years, but uh, he was just, like, his love for the business, his love and his passion for the business was just done, you know what I'm saying? Because, like, Gene and, um, Gino and uh, Bobby Heenan were, like, best friends. Like, aces. You you got to hear the Bobby Heenan shit interview. It's, like, it's the funny, it's probably the funniest this is probably the funniest as as far as comedic as as timing and everything like that. It's probably the funniest shit interview ever. I believe it. Too. Oh man, he, he just he is so he's so fast with his with his thoughts and his clapbacks. It's just snap, snap, snap. <laughs> he just la- he just listen there just laughing. Anyway, that's one thing you could count on from the brain, boy. Yeah, he yeah he that was yeah he's probably my. Uh, He's. Uh, I like to say that Bobby Heenan is the greatest performer in wrestling history, um, as far as in ring, you know, top to bottom, mm. you know, f- you know, from the opening credits to the ending, you know, right, Bobby, right. Heenan, you know, what I'm saying not just in ring stuff, not just announcing stuff, full you package, know, like full, yeah, the full package, yeah, exactly. but. I don't consider him the greatest manager. I don't consider him the greatest color guy. I don't consider him the greatest, you know, you know, worker or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But he was so good at everything. Mm-hmm. He had no flaw. That's why I consider him great. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, because my like, like I, I consider the greatest manager of all time to be Jim Cornette. You know what I'm saying? But he's not my favorite. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because my favorite is Mr. Fuji. Yeah. <laughs> obviously, obviously, <laughs> obviously. But Fuji is one of the worst managers of all time. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's just one promo that made me a fan for life. Oh man! Now, I'll tell you the promo. Yeah, what is it? It's the Survivor Series '88 uh-huh. uh, show. Where uh, 
Demolition, Powers of Pain, double, double turn in the tag team elimination match. And I, I cite that because it's one of my first TV shows that I've seen in wrestling. And, uh, big. All right, a little brief pause. Um, I guess, uh, shit just popped for a second. I don't know what to tell you. Um, you know, we down here in the basement. You know what I'm saying? Not my mom's basement, it's my basement because I'm actually the owner and proprietor of my own facility. But, uh, yeah, Cornets, oh yeah, it's the, uh, the Power, Powers of Pain, Demolition Double Turn at a Survivor Series 88. And he gives the the promo in the backstage with Gene Okerlund. And uh, he says, no way, Gene. My powers of pain are ready. They're strong. Yada, yada, yada. Ching, chong, ching, chong. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so broken, stilted, and it was, he acted like he uh, he knew these guys already, and it was just planned from the get go, and it didn't make sense. I was like, man, it's like seven. It's like, man, this is pro wrestling. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Like, I mean, even even at seven, I was like, why did he go with the? How does he know that he don't know nothing about these guys? <laughs> he just turned on them. And they won. That's the bad part of the thing about it. <laughs> and it makes sense from no logical booking standpoint. <laughs> and at seven, I can point that out. <laughs> and I just was like, you know what? F it. Let's see where it goes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know, oh man. My mama just let me stay up. I'm just going to watch it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Woo. Oh man. What about you since we on the subject before we uh jump into the actual review? What a uh, favorite manager or best manager? Yeah, you might as well go best favorite man. Favorite best. Um if they're not the same. Well, I don't know if mine is fairly obvious or not, but you know, you basically just mentioned the, mentioned the fellow, and it would have to be Bobby the Brain Heenan. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just because, uh, you know, my favorite wrestler is Hulk Hogan, so Hulk Hogan faced a lot of Bobby the Brain Heenan guys over the years, and I got to see a lot of Bobby the Brain Heenan, and then. Uh, uh, as we was talking about when he was doing commentary with um, Gorilla Monsoon, he would have me cracking up, you know what I'm saying? And then when he went to WCW, and it's like he just never lost it. Mm. So you didn't watch you didn't watch WCW like I watched WCW. He was quite awful. Yeah, he was quite awful, and admittedly quite awful. He uh, he, uh, I'm telling you, he was definitely a step or two. Uh, he didn't mesh well with anybody there. Um, and he said he did it only for the money. Uh, he knew it was a guaranteed paycheck, so he just went with it. And um, he tried to offer Bischoff some booking tips or some ideas. And Bischoff, he says, admittedly, he says, uh, Bobby, we just brought you here to do a commentary. Uh, we don't need your any, any input from you. He said, right then and there, he said, every two weeks, went to the to the mailbox to get my check. That was it. He said, didn't care anymore. He said, WCW, just a, it was just an ATM machine. People go there, get paid, get hurt, whatever. Larry Zabisco told me at Megacon, 2008 or 2009, he said, he said, once you got the WCW, you were set for life. It's in my book. He kept, trying to, he kept trying to get me to get his book. Man. I was like, oh, all right, fam. I actually got I got his book um, on my reader. Um, I haven't read it because I figured, dude, you were Triple H before Triple H was Triple H. You just did it in the wrong promotion. You know, I mean, he married Fern's daughter. Oh, okay. I was gonna ask you what you meant by that. Okay. I mean, so how can you knock Triple H for doing the same thing? You did. <laughs> That's quite hypocritical. 
<laughs> but he's a wrestler and he's a worker, so you know. Yeah. Say la vie. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Very interesting. You know, Larry Tabisco's from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which is right down Ooh. the Yeah, no, right down the street from Pencil uh, uh Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Oh. Which is a nice segue to fun? the Extreme Retro Review. I gotta get a uh, I gotta learn how to do the uh, the effects. Oh yeah. So I can get like uh cause the the, the Super mm-hmm. Summer Sizzler mm-hmm. Spectacular is coming up <laughs> pretty soon. <laughs> Alliteration for that ass. Oh man. And he goes, I wanna go. The Super Super Summer Sizzler Spectacular. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the echo shit. I want to punch that shit in. That oh. should be dope. It'll oh, be lame as fuck, but whatever. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy it. Hey, that's hey, that's all that matters. You know what I'm saying? Shit, I used to, used to add sh- stuff in my my show just to make me laugh and stuff. Oh, yeah. It's just yeah, it's just for uh, me and the, the, the listeners to... We gonna pop for it, you know. You know what I'm saying? So shit. Hey, Whatever. If you don't like it, you're you're a loser anyway. So <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> Go Cavs. <laughs> How are the Cavs doing? Oh, uh, right now we're down 0-1, but uh, game two is tonight. Unfortunately, I'm gonna miss Extreme Rules live, but uh, uh, to support my Cavs, I got on uh, LeBron Extreme jersey rules. right now. Punch up the extreme rules card. I'm gonna give a. Uh, we're gonna give a real quick. I uh... already got it up. All right, that's what's up. That's good because I didn't even uh, have to tell you twice. <laughs> you know what I'm about? Let, let me know when you're ready, fam. All right, go for it. Uh, what's the card? All right, so this. Where's is... it? Yeah, where's that? So the show is uh, the Royal Farms Arena in Baltimore, Maryland. Baltimore. That's. That's a uh, WWF territory, so it's going to be uh, it's, it's going to be uh, big on big guys. All right. You need but to know your smart studies. Well, let, I, once I read this card to you, let's see if you still agree with that assessment. Oh no! I mean, the business is small. I'm just saying what Baltimore is notorious. I mean, it's a it's a WWF territory from back in the day, so they value big guys and showmanship. So. The showmanship will always be there. It's the promotion. So, whatever. Go. Gotcha. All right. So, um, women's tag match, Rich Swan and Sasha Banks. Those versus... are two women, huh? Um, it's a mixed tags match. Is it? In t- I have no idea who You said Rich... women's tags match, and Rich Swan is not a woman. My apologies to Rich Swan. <laughs> <laughs> Intergender. Tag team match. We have Rich Swan and Sasha Banks versus Noam Dar and my boo thing, Alicia Fox. What's, Yo, what's up, girl? I used to um, smash a chick in Florida. Uh, used, uh, her name was Alicia, and she was shaped like her. Real talk. So it was uh, it was quite nice. Oh, you lucky son of a bitch. Yeah. Hey. Shout out Alicia. What's popping, baby? Mm-hmm. Oh, and a submission match. Oh, yeah, I don't care about that match. That match sucks, and uh, faces go over. All right. The f- official prediction is that the face will go over. All right. For is The next match is a submission match for the Cruiserweight Championship, which features Neville divis- defending his championship against Austin Aries. Okay, Pac versus Ayers is going to be a great match, but it's severely limiting because you can only win by some... It's just submission? Yeah. Okay, submission. Okay, submission. So, two high flyers, (laughs) and you put them in a submission match. That makes sense. (laughs) Um, Neville's had the belt for a long time. Uh, Ayers has the Lance Chancery uh, submission. So, I'm going to go with Ayers finally getting the belt. Okay, okay. Next we have um, Alexa Bliss mm. versus Bailey Columbus. in a kendo stick on a pole match for the women's title. Um, I don't know where the booking is going. Um, so Bliss is from Columbus, and she 
reminds me of Trish Stratus. <laughs> so she wins by default. Shout out to Trish Stratus. I wish she would like BBC. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, uh, speaking of the Hardy Boys uh, from earlier, mm-hmm. um, the Hardy Boys versus Cesaro and Sheamus in a ca- cage match for the tag team titles. Again, um, I go with. Uh, Sheamus and Cesaro need the belts at this point. I mean, because whoever the Hardys lose to, it's not like they're going to be uh, credible champions because they beat the Hardys. I mean, the Hardys are on a nostalgia run to get their money up and get a notoriety right until the I, until I feel the broken universe gimmick goes and is a go. So, um, I mean, Hardys can go over. I mean, they'll probably. I mean, they'll probably go over, but. Sheamus and Cesaro need the belts, so I can go either way. Push. Okay, okay. Oh, next up, Dean Ambrose versus my favorite wrestler, Cleveland Zone, former WWE (laughs) champion, The Miz. And if Ambrose is disqualified, he loses the Intercontinental title. Um, Who has the belt right now? Dean Ambrose. All right, Dean has the belt now. Uh, so he just got it. So he's had it for a while. Mm, a while. Okay. Um, he's doing nothing with the belt. Uh, I think Miz is actually better with the belt than without the belt. Um, so I can go with some type of uh, some type of tomfoolery chicanery. Miz gets the belt back, or he gets the belt. Yeah. He gets the belt. He, he, I mean, he's he's a performer who is better with a belt. Miz chasing a title does no real business. People chasing Miz and Miz honky tonking his way out of the fucking out, you know, out the door with the belt is where the money is. I know that's right. Okay, so anywhere, wh- however it works, Miz needs that belt. So Feed I'm going with Miz. Lesnar to Miz. Um. I would be very happy if that prediction of yours comes out to be true. As a matter of fact, that would be awesome. Your voice is awful. Hey, man, you can't be a hater all your life, my dear. I mean, I got hate in my heart, and I let it out. <laughs> <laughs> and the final match is a number one contenders match for Brock Lesnar's Universal Championship. It's a five-man match featuring Roman Reigns versus Finn Balor versus Seth Rollins versus Bray Bray Wyatt uh, versus Samoa Joe. So the winner fights Brock at SummerSlam? Um, It doesn't say when. It just makes them number one contender. Okay. Um, But... Might be I would say, I'm going to say push, but it's not even an intriguing push, okay? Mm-hmm. I'm going to say that none of the guys are, I don't care. They're not over to me. I mean, Bray is spooky. I mean, he's a Scooby-Doo villain. Who cares? Samoa Joe, he doesn't, he doesn't have a look. I mean, he has a, he has a, he has his look, but his look is not marketable in WWE. You're not putting him on the cover of your magazines or your ice cream bars in a full frontal shot. You're not doing that. You're not promoting that body body type. So, I mean, he's a B show main eventer, but I mean, if you're going up against Brock Lesnar, X him out. Bray Wyatt, again, spooky guy, X him out. Finn Balor, I guess they're they're promoting him as such, like he's cool like the Fonz or whatever. <laughs> but, I mean, he's a skinny wimp. Shout out Granny. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm going to X him out even though he's like the favorite. Seth is the only guy who the crowd will really, really pop for mm. because he does flashy moves and he does terrible selling. Um, <laughs> so Seth Brock can can work 
I mean, Seth Seth is a is definitely a B show main eventer. Um, he can he definitely can be an A show main eventer. Um, going up against Brock definitely makes it a A show event. So sure. you got to put this where it's at. Roman Reigns automatically X out because you got to you, you. They already said Reigns Lesnar at WrestleMania, so you're not gonna burn that. So you can X him out. Um, so it's Seth or Finn. Um, it's probably why it's a five way to get mm-hmm. Reigns up out of there. Mm-hmm. You go Seth or Finn, and um, I say Finn goes because he never lost his belt. You know what I'm saying? And he gets some good momentum, but they're going to Lex Luger him at, at the, at, at, for Brock. I mean, because if Finn Balor beats Brock Lesnar, why do I care about Roman Reigns at WrestleMania? What rehabbing do you do for Brock Lesnar to get him ready for WrestleMania? I mean, you can it, it's 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 possible. Anybody can be rebuilt, but why? Why do that? So, I mean, I can go either Seth or Finn. Um, I'm lean, I'll lean towards Finn, but to me, honestly, it's an intrigue push because it's a non intrigue push because I don't care. None of these guys are over. Cheers. Cheers to that. I know I was thinking about this earlier when I was um, looking at the card. And I was thinking with the with the right build, I wouldn't have minded seeing uh, Samoa Joe uh, face bra. But going with how things... Uh, how things are as they are now, like you said, there's basically no reason to care. You know what I'm saying? And then one thing that I don't like is like they WWE for, I don't know. I don't like the brand split. You know what I'm saying? Some people do. But one of the reasons why I don't is, you know what I'm saying, you, you see the same matches over and over again and then you can't really have – Something that you can say is special, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, how things are now, you know what I'm saying? It's probably good for the winner that Brock is only there on a part time basis because when they do face him, it'll feel special. And I think for the believability factor, if it had the right build going into it, I would, I think Samoa Joe would be the guy. Okay, I'm fair assessment. I mean, uh, your um, opinion has logic and reason behind it, so I can't fault it. Um, I, I, either way it goes, whoever faces Brock, they need to lose. They have to. I mean, it, it makes no sense. And the, the guy I feel that they put over there to face Brock to lose mm-hmm. can be rehabbed better. Needs to need can it needs to be a guy who can be rehabbed mm-hmm. quickly. Mm-hmm. Samoa Joe, you put him out there first, he loses. You already know. Okay, he's not a guy. Okay, Seth has already been a champ. Seth has already been the man. Um, he loses. Eh, no big deal. He can be rehabbed. Come Royal Rumble, he gives a good showing. He does a couple Phoenix splashes. Bad sell his knee and he's good to go again. <laughs> right. So, you know, Finn Balor, I feel, um, he never since he never lost the title, he can uh razzle dazzle and do his his wacky charisma thing and be rehabbed easily as well. Smoke Jar I don't feel as though he can be rehabbed as easily and as quickly as those two. So that's why I lean towards both uh I lean towards those two as opposed to Joe. Um, I would like to see Joe and um, Brock, uh, but I need to see Joe in a more dominant fashion. I need to see Joe, honestly, with the U.S. title and run through some guys. Um, That's where they should have started. I mean, you can't... I mean, starting these guys as top guys is great, but you need to start guys as top guys in their respective cast, okay? You can't just start guys as top guys and be gunning for the title. You know, start a guy as a top tag team guy. Start a guy as a top, you know, mid-level baby face or mid-level full heel or whatever you got. And then, you know, or and then you got, when you have your real projects, you know your guys that you know are immediate money guys, you know, start them at the top. 
you can't start everybody at the top. It doesn't make yeah. sense to me. That's that. That's why you have this glut of of top <laughs> guys now that you don't really care about. Yeah. You know, I mean, I can I can talk about that. So called top guys. I mean, they're not, yeah, they're not top guys. They're not money guys because they're you're gonna get my ten dollars every month anyway. So I I don't care. Like I'll watch AJ Styles because AJ Styles is a top guy to me. You know, he's proven top guy. Seth Rollins, as much as you force him, or Roman Reigns, as much as you force him, does not scream top guy. Okay? He hasn't done the things that scream top guy. He hasn't put the promotion on his back, top guy. Okay? You're in, I mean, you're in, you're top guy in the machine. Okay? It's different if you're Hogan and you're about to expand nationally and you're the guy. It's different if you're a warrior and you flop as a top guy. Okay, Bret Hart, yeah, you know, Shawn Michaels, yeah, you know. <laughs> okay, you know, Austin, rock, top guys, and you got the promotion on your back. They've given Roman Reigns three, four years of top guy status to put the promotion on his back and carry it to Mars. And they haven't reached that far yet because Darth is flat. <laughs> 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 Shout out to the FE Society. <laughs> oh man, let's take a pause uh, real quick so we can uh, re up, and then uh, I was gonna play a beat, and then uh, we can get into the review.